Guys, I have a secret. When I said 500 likes in the Tyranitar video, at the time I had only had two videos ever with over 500 likes, and one of those videos were at 500 likes exactly. I pretty much just said what I thought was some ridiculous number, and you guys showed a lot of support, and here we are today. We'll be taking a look at the Generation 9 Paradox Pokemon Iron Thorns in a solo run of Pokemon Red and Blue, and let's take a closer look. Unlike Tyranitar, its Paradox form is a rock and electric type Pokemon, and with things like ground and fighting pretty much being non-existent in a red solo run, having the ability to fight back against water types, along with having pretty good coverage against grass, things look pretty solid on paper. As for the stats, things aren't a carbon copy of Tyranitar and there's some notable shifts in the stats. Iron Thorns keeps that massive 134 base attack, but it has slightly less special than Tyranitar, which isn't great, but 84 isn't awful by any means. And if if you're wondering how I pick between special attack and special defense, I call it the Chansey Rule. I just pick the highest stat. Now the most important thing here is the increase to base speed. Now 72 isn't exactly Usain Bolt levels of speed, but I can work with it and it's probably the best change overall. As for the learn set, most of it translates fairly well into Gen 1. Rock Throw is in the starting learn set, and I said in the Rayquaza video that I was a little bit too harsh on it in the past, so let's see how that opinion holds up today. I did change some moves around, like I substituted Growth for Charge, because Charge is just kind of like a messy move that doesn't go into Gen 1 well without a bunch of code. And I just removed some of the later moves like Sandstorm, Wild Charge, and Stone Edge, just to name a few of those. I'm also not going to be showing you the Gen 9 TMs today. There's just so many of them that you wouldn't be able to read it anyway. But you just need to know that we have things like Sword Stance, Body Slam, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Thunderbolt, Earthquake, Dig. So you pretty much learn the best of the bunch from Generation one. As for the new moves, we have four today. Along with Rock Throw and the starting learn set, we also have a full set of the Elemental Fangs. They all have 65 base power, 95% accuracy, and 15 power points. And what top they are is pretty obvious. They each give a 10% chance to burn, freeze, or paralyze the opponent respectively. The final new move will be Rock Tomb. It's an actual pretty solid mid-game rock move that has 60 base power, and just like pretty much everything else we're going to be relying on in the early game, it also doesn't have 100% accuracy. Now this is supposed to carry a guaranteed speed drop to the opponent, but I kind of messed up the code a little bit, and since it pretty much one-shots everything before we're going to replace it later in the game, I didn't really notice it until I was looking at the footage, it was too late. So on paper, Iron Thorns, it looks ready to rock Kanto, but before we see if that's true, I would like to quickly say that likes and comments help out a ton. Honestly, if you guys showed up like you did for the Tyranitar video, for all of my stuff, I would probably be growing at double the rate that I do now. Whether you are someone new, maybe someone who just doesn't normally think about this sort of thing, or if you are a returning subscriber like John Gleeman, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would hit that like and scroll down and let me know this week if you like Iron Thorns or Tyranitar better. I think Tyranitar is the OG and the design is classic, but I'm very fond of this new typing and I think the new coat of paint on Iron Thorns looks fantastic. It's honestly it's a pretty tough one to pick, but with that out of the way, I think we could just sit back, relax, grab yourself a Sodi Pop, and I think we could just dive into it. Now, in this early game, we're going to have a couple of problems that we'll talk about. Now, going into this opening rival battle, it's worth noting that Rock Throw, in pretty much all situations, are going to be like this. Rock Throw does more damage, but with only 65% accuracy, it's often better just to go for the more consistent play, which would be going for Fire Fang or Ice Fang twice here. And we've done two Tyranitar videos in the past, one in Gen 1, 1 in Gen 2, and Iron Thorns is going to keep those same problems that Tyranitar has. You have these excellent, probably one of the best starting learn sets in terms of coverage that we've ever seen, maybe we'll ever see in Generation 1, but we just don't have the special to make use of it. While it's really good and it's going to be great, we're comparing these runs and these cross gens, they're always really good. You're competing against things like Groudon that has a 210 time, Rayquaza had 211, Skeledurge had 2 14 so you got these really elite times and when you're looking at these kind of runs you really got to nitpick and you really
really got to be critical on some things that maybe you wouldn't normally be in a regular type of run. The crux of the problem for Iron Thorns is going to be with 84 base special, it's just not enough to one shot things and then you really, what you would really want to do is rely on that 134 base attack but rock throw is all we have right now and with 65% accuracy it does leave a little bit to be desired and it makes the overall flow of the run feel a little bit inconsistent when you're using that move a little too much. As for the start of the game you really don't have to do too much extra but I do take on the very first optional bug catcher I will be skipping the second one and you can see in the footage that I'm already missing some rock throws and that's just kind of how it goes. Remember that this is the optimized run I think during my second run where I was testing this out, I had the absolute worst luck with Rock Throw. I was missing a ton. There were some battles where I'd miss three or four times in a row, but that's neither here nor there. After beating the final Bug Catcher, we do hit level seven and we get the opportunity to learn Screech. Now it's eerily similar to Tyranitar to where you just really don't have anything to really take advantage of Screech. You do have Rock Throw, but every situation where you would use Rock Throw in this early game, it's gonna one shot anyway because there's so many bug types. It's just not needed. And now I think we can just go straight to Brock. And I'll keep this one brief. We did that extra battle earlier and put us at level seven. And level seven was the range where we can guarantee two shots on both the Geodude and the Onyx. It makes this one very quick, very painless. But the great thing about this one is that we're actually able to get two levels and jump up to level nine when we finally take out the rock solid Pokemon trainer. Going towards Mount Moon, this one isn't as simple as something like Rayquaza where we're trying to do the bare minimum. Today, we will be having to pick up several extra trainers on our way to Cerulean. I will be picking up this bug catcher here with fire fang it doesn't take too long and then when we get inside of mount moon iron thorns is more than equipped to take on the usual suspects here we got the super nerd I always bring up the super nerd we got the double grass last we got ice fang for the hawker here and that means that by the time we get done with the final super nerd before we pick our glorious dome fossil we hit level 16 and level 16's all right we have super effective damage for the pidgeotto coming up and we're at 34 speed which means i will get to go first but there was some problems you basically need to use rock throw here so the adjustment i made today was that we actually use two really early rare candies to get up to level 18 and when we take a look at rival number two you'll see why it just makes it to where thunder fang is now a guaranteed one shot we go first there's no threat of a sand attack and that always feels good using rock throw just made it feel like it was going to be one of those situations to where maybe i was just gonna have to reset the run until i got the required hard luck to make it through and I just simply do not like that kind of run so I wanted to make it more consistent and this is the strategy I came up with. Now as for the rest of the fight, once the Pidgeotto's down, we're a little bit extra leveled. We have crazy stats being a pseudo legendary. We can just kind of romp through this one. It's not too bad. And as for Nugget Bridge and the route to Bill's house, something else the Rare Candies early helped us do here was to stop relying on Rock Throw once again. Now you have a pretty good little toolkit here. You have a Fang for pretty much every occasion that you could think of and hitting that level 18 threshold a little bit earlier means that just like with rival number two we don't have to rely on rock throw as much and it made this part feel a lot better Another thing that using the rare candies early helped us do was to hit level 21 a little bit earlier and this gives us access to Rock Tomb. It has higher base power than Rock Throw but more importantly it has higher accuracy. Now it's only 95% just like the Fangs and something you won't see on paper is the amount of time that adds up just from missing moves. You miss Rock Throw, that's a given, but 95% accuracy statistically you're going to miss 1 out of 20 times and it just kind of made this early game a little bit slower than some of the other elite runs that we had. Out Outside of that, we could just go straight to Misty. And we're an electric type, so we have a pretty decent matchup here. As for the Star U, we have Thunder Fang. We can just one and done it, get it out of here, move on to the Star Me, and we are weak to water. Things like a Bubble Beam crit could be very problematic for us, but I still don't think it would one shot us. We don't have the best special, but we do have pretty decent. And it just goes for Water Ground twice. I hit a couple of Thunder Fangs, and just like that, the second badge is down. 
And we talked about the moves at the start. I can learn Dig if I really want to, but I just don't use it during this run. It's a great move, especially if your Pokemon's a little bit limited on what it can learn, but we're definitely not limited on what we can learn with Iron Thorns here. And Dig is pretty much only useful if you can't three-shot something. It's a two-turn move, meaning that if your current move set or the moves you will learn can just handle something in two hits, it's just as efficient, especially when you consider in like you can get a turn one crit and make it one turn. It's just not needed and I thought I'd bring that up because people always talk about dig how it's really good and in some other videos people ask me why I didn't learn dig and that's kind of why. Now we're going to take it all the way down to the SSN and we do learn body slam here. It's not as good as rock tomb because it just does a little bit more damage but having a second attack that utilizes our massive 134 base attack is very welcome here. The extra PP means that we can just always be using that attack stat for the most part. It's really helpful. I do replace fire fang because it's the one fang that's kind of outlived its usefulness. You still need ice fang for those little pesky ground and rock tops that we're going to see a few times coming up in the mid game. And thunder fang gets stabbed. It's our strongest move so you might as well keep that. Outside of that I do get the rare candy guarded by the gentleman. We have a rock move. They're fire tops. We don't need to see that. And we can just take a look at rival number three. And this fight is nothing more than a showcase of how much stronger we are now with better moves. We can utilize that beefy attack stat. Rock tomb can pretty much take care of everything and if it's a lesser opponent like maybe the Raticate, I can just go with Body Slam for the Kadabra as well. I can't one shot the Ivysaur but it's pretty close. It's never going to be able to beat me on its own and it's very quick and we can take it on to Lieutenant Surge speaking of quick. And this is one of those fights where I'm electric top, so I resist electric moves. It's kind of a free fight. Now, Rock Tomb's just going to destroy everything. And you might be wondering about Dig. Like, hey, use Dig. It's super effective. But like I just talked about earlier, we can one-shot pretty much everything. And on the Raichu, it is normally a two-hit KO. But I just crit here, get it out of the way. This is way faster than Dig. And we can move on just like that. After the fight, we do get Thunderbolt. Very solid. Pretty much the best electric move in the game. But you might be surprised that it's really not needed for this run. I do learn it just because it's really good, but with our disparity between our special and our attack stat, eventually you're going to want to pivot over to a more physical learn set, but for now, it's pretty good, and there's really no benefit of not just learning it now. From there, we have enough coverage to make Rock Tunnel absolutely trivial, and we could just skip it all the way to Celadon. And first, we're going to take on the Rocket Hideout like usual. We have great coverage moves, so there's no need to buy or anything like that. In fact, I'm going to hold off on buying with Iron Thorns today, so that means I will be picking up the high money items and as far as Giovanni goes I have Ice Fang to melt his ground and rock tops and I do have Thunderbolt for the very specially weak Kangaskhan and I can just take it out pretty quick. We can move on no need to linger here. Now we can take it over to Pokemon Tower and while rival number four is going on let me address something that maybe you've thought about uh, and you might be thinking why pick Bulbasaur for the rival starter? Why not Squirtle or something like that? He's gonna have Gyarados on his team it's gonna be always trivial so why did you do that? And the main reason is is Razor Leaf. We've talked about this in other videos, but Razor Leaf, it hits super hard when you're weak to it. It's very oppressive, and even considering that we're going to have a boosting move later, it's going to badge boost our special, it just doesn't matter because crits will ignore that buff, and it's just the biggest threat throughout the run, Gyarados or not. But outside of that, we can just easily handle the rest of Pokemon Tower. We don't need to go into it, let's just keep moving on. When we're done with that, I head down to face Erica, and I must admit that this is probably the most inconsistent part of the run. It's not a bad fight, but there's just, there's always the chance to lose. The main thing is sleep, and immediately on turn one, we get put to sleep by the victory bell. But miraculously, I wake up immediately, and you can see what I was talking about earlier with Razor Leaf. Even this mid-game Razor Leaf absolutely slices one of our arms off, but I am able to recover, take it out, and move on to the most pathetic Pokemon in the game, Tangela. Now it can't do anything to us. It just doesn't learn any grass moves. It's just a very special Pokemon. I absolutely hate it. We take it out and at the end is Vileplume. And if it goes for Petal Dance, I do believe that we could survive anything outside of a crit. Here it goes for a Mega Drain. I do survive at 20 HP and I take it out. And you can see how this fight's a little bit volatile. It wasn't the most consistent. I won more than I lost, but this is kind of how fights generally go because you can tank two moves pretty comfortably. And outside of getting put to sleep, I did win this one pretty consistently. After the fight, we get to see another quirk of Iron Thorns, and that's the fact that once again, I'm going to be using some early rare candies. I use three of them, I get up to level 37, and 
if you're wondering why I do this, it's because our experience is pretty much in the best range it's going to be for quite a while. Something I would like to talk about is that at level 35, we get the chance to learn growth, and there's a couple of things I want to talk about with that. First, it's a replacement move for charge. Now, if charge was in Gen 1, it'd be absurdly broken. What it would do in a Generation 1 setting would be making our next electric move do 50% more damage, and it would raise our special by one stage. Now, I cannot figure out how to do the first part of that in terms of a Generation 1 code, so I just went with growth. You can kind of see why. Now, outside of that, growth gives you a real opportunity to use a full special set, maybe something like growth, thunderbolt, blizzard, earthquake, and that would be really solid. It would give you a ton of coverage for the Elite Four, and it would be really good. Now, what we'll see coming up is what it came down to for me is the fact that Swords Dance gives you plus two, we have a higher base attack, and Growth only gives you plus one, and we have a lesser special attack. So that's my main reasoning, and I really wanted to find a way to bring that up in the video, and I guess we're doing it here. And down in the Safari Zone, I'm just doing the standard stuff. I'm picking up the Carbos. I'm picking up the Protein. I don't use them immediately because it's more efficient to save them. I do pick up the final HMs of the run, and now we can take a look at our one Celadon buy. I make a mistake today. I buy too many Sodi Pops. Now, is that a problem? I'll let you decide. Can you have too many Sodi Pops? But the main thing here is access to Rock Slide. It's not much better than Rock Tomb, but the extra base power just makes it worth it to me. It'll help you hit tons of extra ranges that 60 base power just wouldn't allow you to do. And outside of that, I was able to scrounge up enough money to afford 7 vitamins. Now, I talked about our speed stat not being the worst, but it is pretty bad and if you don't do something about it, you're going to be outsped in a couple of key fights and it's going to make things a little harder. So we're going to supplement that. We're going to max out our speed stat experience and to do that, we need four carbos here and we pick up three proteins with the remainder. Now we're going to be going to Sylph, another early Sylph. It's kind of a standard thing for these high tier runs to do in the first order of business like always, but this is a little bit more important here is that we're going to go to the 10th floor and the main prize is going to be Earthquake. And we're doing the bare minimum here, but after after I get the card key, we're taking a visit to the sweet Swords Dance TM, and from there, we're finally going to be able to make our very hard pivot into a full physical learn set, and life is really going to change. It's been a pretty good run so far, but now we're about to start obliterating everything that moves. And outside of Body Slam, everything is getting replaced. We're going to put in Rock Slide in place of Rock Tomb, we're going to toss in Earthquake, and then we're going to learn Swords Dance, and this is pretty much our final learn set for the run. Now, for what it's worth, I do think Rock Slide Earthquake, those two moves, provide some of the best coverage in terms of like a one-two punch, and then Body Slam's just kind of there to clean up stuff or just to take out lesser opponents. And I guess we can take a look at rival number five, and we can see how this new look Iron Thorns finally does now that we don't have to rely on that special stat as much. And we've seen this song and dance before. Once you get the badge boosting move on a really strong Pokemon, you really don't need to utilize it a ton. You just kind of pepper it in. Now we use one, but the fact of the matter is we really don't need it. The first few Pokemon we outspeed in one shot regardless. And the Alakazam, since we don't have the speed badge boost, it can just hit us anyway. If it crits, it could be kind of bad, but it really doesn't matter. It's insignificant at the end of the day. So what are you using one Swords Dance for? It's for the Venusaur. It puts Earthquake in a guaranteed one shot range and that's what I do I use the 100% accurate earthquake and take it out and that's the battle over and you might be thinking hey Matt why wouldn't you just use rock slide it's just a stronger move overall and what I'm gonna tell you guys is that I don't trust the 90% accuracy testing this run I was just missing a ton especially in the early game when we had rock throw that I wanted consistency here and there was too many damn times when I was testing this run where rock slide missed I got hit with a razor leaf and I had to reset Set. and I wanted to have a reset list run if at all possible so using earthquake just made that better any more questions I thought not sit down punk now we can skip ahead to Uncle Koga, and you might notice that I'm pretty much half health, I'm already poisoned, but it doesn't matter. And on top of that, I had already used some of my earthquakes, I didn't heal, I was really trying not to heal as little as possible as I could during the run, so I had to utilize Rock Slide, which isn't as good on the coughing. But what am I trying to say here, I'm going on too long, basically I had to save some earthquakes, it doesn't matter, this fight's trivial, I'm ready to get my feet wet. And that means it's time for the most brisk swim of my entire life, going down to Cinnabar. We're on the bare minimum track that means there's no extra battles today and after pondering on if tombstoner brother 
is actually the 28th TM or not one of life's biggest mysteries, we can take a look at Blaine. And this is a very quick look because we have Rock Slide, we have Earthquake, and if you want an indication of how easy this battle is, I don't even have to set up a Swords Dance or anything like that, and we just can quickly move on, and we can make our way up to Sabrina. And there's a reason, Sabrina is really not that hard of a matchup, but the reason why you would want to hold off is because you outspeed the other Pokemon. Now there's no real need to set up here. You can just mow this team down like the degenerates that they are, and the only thing that could potentially be a problem is that you don't outspeed the Alakazam. Maybe it crits, but you gotta remember that it actually doesn't know Psychic. So if it doesn't crit, it doesn't one-shot you, and it doesn't set up Reflect, you can just get it out of there. And just like that, that's the seventh badge down. And let's keep this Iron Thorns train rolling straight to the eighth gym leader, Giovanni. Now it's red and blue Giovanni. There's not much to really hope for in terms of challenges, but I do have to set up one Swords Dance. And I do this because both the Nidoking King and Queen are not one shots without it. And the Rhydon may not even be a two shot if you don't set up. It just makes the ranges much more comfortable. But Earthquake does its job here. That's all you really need to know. And the only thing standing in our way before we get to the end of the game is rival number six. And for this one, it's probably better if you don't set up immediately because you're gonna level up pretty much right after the Pidgeot. But just for safety, just to help the damage ranges just a little bit to ensure no shenanigans happen, maybe I take a Hydro Pump from the Gyarados. I do set up once and I let Rock Slide loose. And I mean that literally because I accidentally used Rock Slide on the Rhyhorn. And you can see that it actually does pretty good damage despite being resisted, but that's neither here nor there. It doesn't matter. The key thing to making this fight 100% consistent is waiting for that precious little Growlithe to come in and you want to get plus two which means you want to have plus four on your attack before you progress in the fight. Now this does do a couple of things for you. Number one, it means that you can outspeed the Alakazam so there's no threat at all of getting crit or something crazy that happens in every other run pretty much so we can just get it out of there and the plus four to our attack just like with rival number five is that magical point where Earthquake is a guaranteed one shot. Once again, don't put it in the hands of 90 percent accuracy this game can and it will screw you over if you give it the chance so go with the more consistent strategies and just like that we can move on And at this point, Iron Thorns is ready to finish the run strong. Now you can see by the time that we're not gonna be the fastest Pokemon ever, but we can still have a pretty solid showing here. It's worth noting that I do skip the rare candy in Victory Road, and it's not because I'm trying to save time, it's just because it would put you in a bad level up range for the final fight, and it was just easier to cut out. And I guess I'll go into more detail, I'll bring that up in a minute when we make it to the champion fight specifically. But I don't think, personally, I don't think there's much to worry about in the Elite Four. We pretty much already conquered our biggest weaknesses and outside of maybe like missing a move and a Gyarados Hydro Pump crit, I just don't think we have much to worry about and I think we could just take a look at the Elite Four and find out for ourselves. Lorelei is first, and we're actually not weak to Lorelei. It feels like every other run I do, we're weak to Lorelei, and it's pretty bad. But here, the key, the magic thing, is that you want to set up plus two, just one single Swords Dance, and that's pretty much going to set you up for success for the rest of the fight. I do crit on the Cloister, but you have to trust me when I say that it doesn't matter. The plus two is pretty much the re the Cloister is the reason for it. But outside of that, we're just one-shotting everything. Slowbro is tanky enough to survive, but it's kind of insignificant, and we don't really need to spend any more time on the spot. Very very easy, very consistent. And once again, this week, guys, Hiker Anthony is filling in for Bruno. I think Bruno's just tired of his job. I think he's gonna quit soon. But for this fight, all you need to know is that the base defense of the Onyx are a little bit too high, so one Swords Dance just makes this one feel a little bit better. And outside of that, you pretty much sweep it, and it's over. Hiker Anthony, Bruno, doesn't matter. Moving on. Agatha was pretty much the one fight in the run where I had to make a huge concession, and that's the fact that I just had to brute force it because I would never be able to outspeed the two Gengars. Now what ends up happening is the worst case scenario. I get put to sleep immediately and I stay asleep. I get confused and I start to get chipped down to pretty low, almost in the red health, and just in the nick of time, I wake up, I fight through the confusion, I get off an earthquake, but I still have an uphill battle. On the Golbat, I'm still confused and I hurt myself turn one. 
but it just goes for a Confuse Ray, and it doesn't really affect me since I'm already confused, and I fight through it on the next turn to hit a Rock Slide to take it out, and I guess we're still in it even though we're really low. Haunter comes in, and we get our first stroke of luck for the entire battle. I snap out of Confusion, and since I outspeed everything outside of the Gengars, I get off an Earthquake, and we're moving on to the Arbok. I can take it out with an Earthquake as well, and now we have a real shot since the last Gengar's move pool was pretty awful. It goes for Toxic, and since it needs a few turns to ramp up to actually kill me, I am able to take it out on the next turn, and we take Agatha on the first attempt, although it was pretty dicey, it was pretty close. As for Lance, you might be wondering about Gyarados, probably not, but Rock Slide, one shot, it doesn't matter, and we have our experience set up in such a way that we'll level up right after it, and that means I will set up one Swords Dance on the first Dragonair that comes in, and now we can pretty much go for the clean sweep. Aerodactyl does outspeed us, but we resist all of its moves, so at the end of the day, unless we missed about 13 times on the uh, Dragonite, uh, we're pretty much going to win this one every time. As for the self-proclaimed best battler in the world, let's put him to the test. Unlike something like Groudon, we don't actually need to set up the full slew of Swords Dance, we only need plus four. So I do set that up, and Body Slam with the plus four is a comfortable one-shot on the Pidgeot, but here, I crit. So don't think I made a mistake, I just got an unlucky crit and I didn't take it out. I don't know why, it was just a guarantee, I guess 100% accuracy compared to 90, I was scared of missing, ended up costing myself a turn, but I don't care. Do you care? Nobody cares, let's move on. As for the Alakazam, Kazam. I don't outspeed it. It does have Psychic, Reflect. It could be kind of annoying. It does set up Reflect, but I guess it must have forgot that we've been Swords Dancing all night long and a Body Slam's gonna take its head off clean. Right on is next. It cannot withstand an Earthquake here. We're already boosted. It's far too late. We take it out and I just want to see that Gyarados. I just want to talk. I let a rock slide loose, the 90% accuracy doesn't fail me, we take out the threat, and now we're set up for a prime success to end this run. As for Arcanine, it's known for being a thick little puppy, but I go for the rock slide 90% accuracy once again, it does not fail me, we take it out, and we can move on to the end of the fight, and we set up this plus four for one specific reason, that's Venusaur. Earthquake is a guaranteed one shot barring that it doesn't crit, and here, we actually crit so we don't knock it out. Venusaur gets its one shot, it goes to charge up a solar beam but somebody tell this idiot that it's about to die we take it out of the next turn and that's the run over and that's it iron thorns has done it with a final time of two hours 26 minutes and 17 seconds sadly it is the worst cross gen run i've done up to date but if you're just looking at it in a vacuum it is a really solid run if it was on the regular tier list it would be like a top five or six run overall especially considering the zero resets now just to recap and go over the the flaws having just all right special and having to utilize that for pretty much a lot of the early game and if you want to use your attack stat you have to go for a 65% accurate move. That's really what slowed it down, and it had to do some extra grinding early. And when things are as close as they are, as elite as they are in this cross-gen runs, that alone is just kind of enough to put it down. Now, once you do get Swords Dance, once you get the full physical pivot, it's really good, really solid, and I think any run that has zero resets is just fun in my book. So, I had fun. Even though it wasn't the best, I can accept that. Now, if you're wondering, I have been using, like, how, how do I get this color palette? You might be wondering. I should have probably mentioned this early in the video, but I didn't. Uh, I've been utilizing the Gen 2 sprites. You probably noticed. I never mentioned it, but it just allows me to set a specific palette just for Iron Thorns, and I can really kind of go ham with the four colors. So, that's why we get these beautiful sprites, and we'll probably see more of this in the future. But I think that's about it for me. I don't really have much more to say. I don't have a tier list for cross-gen runs just yet. I'd like to get a few more just for some more data points. And once again, special shout out to my channel members. I really appreciate the support. You guys are like the rocks of the channel and I just from the bottom of my heart I really appreciate it and if you're someone who's here that's hearing my voice right now this late into the video a special thank you to you as well because not everybody makes it this far as a matter of fact I got my analytics I look it up hardly anybody makes it this far a very small percentage so I really appreciate you and if you're somebody here that's not subscribed for some reason what are you doing if you like solo run content I do this all the time go ahead make yourself known down in the comments go ahead and subscribe you won't regret it but that's pretty much all I have for you this one's been fun uh i did, never expected the original video to get to 500 so here we are doing it i don't want to ramble too long so i guess we're going to end the video there and i'll catch you on the next one bye